1966 Shelby GT350H, which is a Hertz Renner racer. So the reason we've got the front end taken apart today is the first thing you want to do on a Shelby is to find out if it's got its hidden Ford VIN numbers, which should be K codes, to make sure you got a real car. Then after that, if you confirm that, you can go look at the rest of it. So Alex is taking the front end of this apart. Let's pull this fender off and reveal if we've got a K code. And clearly we do. Numbers are beautiful, 6R09K. I won't reveal the last numbers because SAC does not like that. What you do is you send this number and your SFM number, which I can reveal, which is right here on your tag, 6S1585 to SAC, and they will confirm as to whether it's a numbers matching car or not. Now also Shelby also stamped the SFM number right here as well on the inner fender that you can see, but the K code number is hidden. This one is clearly has not been touched and it is beautiful. So this side has not been hit, has not been changed. It's a very good start. Now, if I'm traveling, I'm looking at something, I bought a lot of these out of barns, bottom them out of fields, bottom them out of nice garages. People really don't like you taking their cars apart. <laughs> yeah. But you gotta know if they're real. A lot of these cars were hit back in the day. A lot of people didn't know it. I'm not saying they did anything illegal. A lot have been rebodied. A lot of them had the internet aprons changed, and that makes a difference. Now, on this car, it's got its original Shelby tag, which is fantastic. It's got its original rivets. So, I've seen this many, many times that these have been changed, and many, many times they haven't. I know enough this is original tag. Now, again, if I was in the field and we couldn't take some of these cars apart, and we're about to spend big money, yeah. what I'd like to do is I'll take one rivet off and turn the tag and reveal the K code number. Now, since this one's never been taken off, I want to leave it. We're going to take the fender off since we have this in the shop and we have the luxury here. But again, if you're out chasing around and looking at one, you would not be able to do this. So why are we taking the fender off? Well, because the K code number is under that tag. And we can see up inside, they're usually stamped pretty hard. If that number is a 6R09K, and I can make out a couple of these numbers over here that I saw over here. So cool, original paint. Yes, uh, 6 or 9 k it is the same number as the other side, really cool. So we've got a numbers matching car according to SAC. This is a real GT350H. Now in 1966, there were 1,000 of these cars built. Okay. 800 of them were black and gold, and the other 200 were just the primary Shelby colors, roughly 50 each. And then in the first 100 cars, they're not exactly sure, but they, the first 100 cars could have been four-speed cars. They know that 53 of them were. The holy grail of all those cars, they made one that was a four-speed yep. with a factory wood wheel with a factory Cobra button. I owned that car for several years. I got all the proof at home, don't own it anymore. So the next thing when you're walking up to one of these cars to see if you've got an original motor in it. The easiest spots to look at because down on the bottom above the oil pan on the block is where they stamp this K code number in them, but a lot of times you can't see them, more times than not, because they put it in the rough casting and it was not in the pad. All right. So you can come up here and you look at a date code, which is right there, 6C9W. Oh, and by the way, I did send these numbers off to SAC already. Oh, you did? Yeah, so you haven't seen this yet. So they verified that this is a matching number car. And now it's in the registry under my name because we found it. So pretty cool. Cool. So thank you, Howard Pardee. Thank you, SAC. If you ever need a car, if you have your Keiko number and your Shelby number and you want it verified or you want to get the records to the car, send them to Howard Pardee at SAC and he will confirm or deny that. And the email for that is right here, S-A-A-C-H-P at snet.net. Incredible these guys keep these records. One other thing when we get back into this, when you get your verification back, they will ask you if you want the original documentation. Oh, this is cool. Where'd you find that, Alex? Gold box. So that is the actual original owner's manual that was in the glove box when Alex was cleaning out the car. And now we've got any warranty records, delivery records, build records, invoices, all that for this car. Saks keeps the records of them. And if you verify that you have a real car, which we did, you can get all these records.
I don't know that you've seen stuff like this. Oh wow. I've seen it many times, but this car was thirty eight hundred and eight dollars. Was in was internal cost of Hertz. Just confirming it's a black car right here through Shelby. And then any warranty work it had, which is probably what that was, we have all those all that paperwork here as well. So there's 11 documents we were able to obtain from SAC. Really cool. Okay, now back to checking out if it's got numbers match and powertrain in it. So we got a real car, real body. Let's see if we're the doing motor well now. So if if you're out in the field and it's hard to see that number down there, which we'll go down there, look so we can see it. You've got a date code here of 69W, which I think is January, February, March. And if you look at the paperwork, that matches up. Okay. So we're we're looking good so far. Now, original intake is here. It says Cobra here, and there's your part number, which is correct. S2MS 9424A. Now, this is a big deal here. We're looking at the carburetor, and it looks correct to me. And these carburetors are special to these cars and are incredibly expensive. They will run you between four and five thousand dollars. So here's where you want to look, Alex, in this circle. It's a 112 with the L3 on top, which is correct. This is the original carburetor for this car, which is huge. And then the heads were either going to be a 19, a 20, or a 21. Okay. Those will all be hypo heads. Now, you can, sometimes you can either see that in the front or the back. Oh, there it is. Here it is right here. So we've got a 20 on this head, so that's correct. So it's probably going to be cross over here for the other number and not up here. 20? Uh, no, it's 21. 21. So we've got 21. So original body. Oh, another cool thing. These fenders are date coded. That was correct. And that was date coded correct, so I looked at it. But they are different. If you walk them and look at it, and you didn't know these cars really well, you think, man, one of those fenders isn't right. Well, on these Hertz cars or the 66 Shelbys, if you see these triangular marks here, yes. those are actually crumple zones, like crush zones even on the new Wranglers. Yeah. They had that only on the driver's side, not on the passenger side. So it's got the original driver's fender and the original passenger fender with the date codes on there. That's cool. Really cool. Try Y headers are on it. Original fuel pump, which I see you've gone around, must be having a problem with. Yeah. We do that because we're trying to get it to run, which is okay. Uh, original dual point distributors in it. Monte Carlo bars here. Another thing when you walk up to look at a 271 horse car, which it has to have, is this massive harmonic balancer. Okay. See how much bigger that is in oh, a yeah. standard 289? I mean, that's just no mistaking what you've got there. Now, the next thing, on the Hertz cars. These cars all came with competition brakes and GT350 stiff. Now, they were renting these cars, and what happened up front when these people were renting them, competition brakes, you gotta step on them, you gotta get them hot to make them work. A number of these cars got crashed right off the bat before they got off the lot. So, and this is a really rare piece, if you look on that firewall right there, or in the inner fender, see that additional piece to the below the master cylinder? Yep. It's kind of a an added valve to help stop the car so you didn't have to press as hard. Okay. That is an incredibly rare piece. Quick ratio steering box. Let's see if that's in it. Yes, there it is. HEC AX code is uh, um, HCC AX 5L24B. That is a quick ratio box. So, so far we are looking great. Um, the dash tack is gone, kind of a drag, but we do have one, right? Yes, we do. Okay. We did find it. Now we've got. Uh, Original seats, original carpet, original gauges, everything's correct. There's the tack. So these all came with dash tacks. They drilled a hole, ran the wiring loom down, and just screwed them to the dash. We'll have this on here soon. And there's a reason why this door's off. The gentleman that owned this car bought it in 1971. 
His new wife wrecked it in 1972, slid it into a pole or a tree. Fortunately, it didn't get into the A pillar, it didn't get into the B post, didn't get into the roof, only the door. We have a 66 date coated door, just happens to be in the paint booth. But when we get this car in here up and running and kicking, which we'll do another reveal on it, yep. it's really, really neat. Um, now on the back side of the car, we got the original gas cap, which is awesome. This is all original paint. Original GT350 emblem. We haven't cleaned all this stuff up yet. We will for the final, final reveal. And this is the original dealership. They got it from her, so delivered it is Beach Ford in Virginia Beach. Really, really neat. Now, let's get it up in the air. Okay. I want to look at the exhaust hangers in the back, which I'm positive are correct this car has not been hit. But the Keiko has a different exhaust hanger areas in the frame rails. And we'll look to see if it's still got the nine inch in it. Yep. Sure it does, but let's check. So the Hertz cars, as the other GT 350s, were equipped with the rear plexi windows. Brake scoop, functional with a hole in it to, to run the air back to cool the brakes. Really honest car, original paint, neat, neat car. And it looks like it is going to be all numbers matching. You ready? I'm ready. I don't know if I mentioned, but of course, these cars did all come with disc brakes. Cobra oil pan, super trick. Look at this, this car has not been bottomed out, which is unbelievable. Yeah, most of them have. The pan's not scratched, has not been bottomed out here. Transmission pan hasn't been touched, and this is incredible on the bottom of this car. So, these cars came from the factory in red oxide primer, and they had drips and stuff everywhere. This car has not been touched all its red oxide primers here and no rust and look at the frame rails actually they look like it's even had a jack on them yeah they're i've never seen that before on a mustang. i don't think i have either on a mustang there's no dents dings or anything on the frame rails okay you know you had overrider traction bars in some of the earlier cars these this car is underrider traction bar rental traction bars are here look at these frame rails wow no rust Quarter drop-offs, no rust. Both sides. Now these exhaust hangers, where they're positioned up in this car, are correct for a K-code car. They're different back here, Alex, than a standard car. These are right. So I mean, this car literally has not been messed with. I see you put a gas tank in it. I did. What have you been doing? Uh, it may or may not run and drive. Okay. So, it's definitely nine inch. So I'll tell you what, everything is looking great on this car. This thing is absolutely rust free. Okay, now the most important thing is, does it have the original motor in it? All signs are pointing to yes. I haven't seen any reason why it wouldn't be. Okay, so this is where, historically I've found the numbers and it looks like Alex, I, they're normally right here yeah. It looks like it's, but this one's stamped a little bit behind the motor mount. You see them? Oh, yeah. So, this one's going to be a little bit more difficult to get the right reading off of. Here it is. Ah! So, you can see the last four digits it is a number matching car. That is huge. Why is that huge? In rental racers, believe it or not, some people rented them and stole the motors out yeah. of them. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of them went racing and blew the motors up. For a rental racer to have its original motor in it, original front fenders, and no rust, I am pretty excited. Awesome. So, now what we're going to do is Alex is going to put the rest of this car back together. We're going to get the door on it, we're going to get it running and driving, and we'll see you next time. And we're back. The front end has been reassembled on the car. Where we're inspecting and showing you that it is in fact a matches number car. had not been hitting the front and no rust. From there, we did a major mechanical service. Man, this car turned out great. Again, I'm considering this a sympathetic restoration, so check it out. When we get a car that's been sitting for over 20 years, the first thing we do is we take the valve covers off and look at it. We took them off, heads were incredibly clean, there was nothing inside that looked like it was going to be an issue. 
However, when it's been sat this long, it's much easier to protect something than just take the heads off, check and make sure all the valves aren't stuck, especially on a numbers matching motor like this, which is crazy valuable. So we took the heads off, put them on the bench, make sure none of the valves were stuck, make sure they're all operating properly. And we'll go to each cylinder, we'll take some coil and spread it on each ring and roll the motor over and make sure it's not stuck and everything's working right. It wasn't ever stuck, super clean inside, like amazingly clean. So we must have changed the oil in this thing 50 times. Put it back together, rebuilt the carburetor, changed the fuel pump, cleaned the fuel system, put the battery in it, lit right up. Runs great. Then from there we go to the brakes. So this has got Kelsey Hayes front disc brakes on it. We went ahead and bought a brand new set that from Summit Racing that had been remanded, that had them in stock. It's a B. <laughs> and kept the original ones. Same with the fuel pump, we kept the original fuel pump. So the brakes have been done, new set of BFGs, all the fluids have been changed. And part of the original exhaust system had taken off. Guy was tinkering with it, I don't know why I did that. But the original resonators were with the car. We put them back on, which is amazing. Basically, the exhaust system on this car, it appears to be that the header's original, resonator's original, and some of the center section's original. The mufflers have been removed, and the real tailpipes have been changed to something weird. So we sourced the correct ones from Cobranda. So it's got the right tips on the back. Again, the majority of the paint on this car is original. Unbelievable patina. All the glass is original. When we changed this door, which we have pictures of the other door, we actually have the other door, we used all the original components out of the original door, including the glass. So all the glass in this car is original. It still has the dent in the rocker panel. We did not attempt to fix that. When the other door was on, it was damaged, it still opened and shut properly. This one opens and shuts like it's supposed to as well. Now let's look under the hood. If you guys were noticing on our first video, we were going through all the numbers matching components. There were a couple of things that weren't correct. However, the correct items came with the car or we sourced them. So when we found the car, it didn't have the right Monte Carlo brakes or export brakes, whatever you want to call it. It had the one with the U in it because it had the oval air cleaner and it had an aftermarket set of Cal custom valve covers. We put the original air cleaner back on. And fortunately the original Monte Carlo bar, export brakes, whichever one you're comfortable with calling it, came with the car, we put that in as well. And then these valve covers we sourced from Cobranda. But other than that, this motor is so correct, it's so original. Again, it's got the original dual point distributor, the original carburetor, the original intake, the correct heads. It's actually born with motor, born with block. All the numbers are correct. Now, I would consider this a sympathetic restoration in the fact we tried to keep this car as original as possible. Now, there's two schools of thought. If you can keep one this original, that's the way you go. Second school of thought, if you want to build the finest in the world, an MCA national gold winning car, this would be one to start with as well. It is so correct. Hasn't been hit in the front. Again, the numbers are on of both inner fenders, a rust free car, Shelby tag never removed, and a true numbers matching car. Not a loosely a numbers matching car, a real numbers matching car. And when you look at the bottom of this car and see all the red oxide primer, what an incredible car to start with. But I truly hope that somebody keeps their car like it is, drives it and enjoys it like it is. So let's go drive it and enjoy it. Now, if you listen to it, it starts up, runs right. We'll do a little discussion while we're driving it. All the gauges work. It runs, it drives, it stops and acts like it's supposed to. Look at that. So we'll get it GoPro up, get the cameras on it, and take you guys for a ride. So can you imagine back in the day you just left the Hertz counter, they gave you this key, and for $17 and 17 cents a mile, you got to go race? Wow. I think most people back in the day didn't even have a clue how to put the seatbelt on. So yes, these factory harnesses, race harnesses were in these cars. And this is the correct set. Let's go drive and enjoy this GT350H. Love the tack. I mean, how bold was that girl? You said, well, let's drill three holes in the dash and just screw the tack in there. That's what they did. This is the original dash pad. It is cracked, but I just thought it was cool patina wise to leave it. If you'll notice all the gauges are working. Speedo, Odo, oil pressure, fuel, everything's working. 
really cool. Carpet is original this car. Like I said, everything in the interior of this car is original with the exception of the tack and the floor mats. This car is tight. It doesn't wander. The steering, it still drives straight. We didn't even have to line it. It does have some new bushings in the front that we did, but not, not a lot. It wasn't worn. It's one of the few I've ever seen, again, that was this car has never been bottomed out. Now, it, and it does still run strong. I mean, those of you who are watching this know these are 306 horsepower, but look at that, man. It still runs hard. I mean, at five grand, I mean, it screams. What a neat car. I think if I really went back in the day, I'd probably never return it. So another thing I really like about this car is the fact that it has not been for sale. It's had single ownership history for the past 50 years. Over my lifetime of buying and selling cars, the Shelby Mustangs tend to be the hardest ones to get people to sell and the most emotional ones when you finally get them. This car has not been on the road since 1972 such an honor to get it back on the road and drive it and I like to get these cars back out in circulation where people can see them again I really don't think this car should be restored but that's up to the next owner it really does drive good it runs hard it does everything it's supposed to do I mean, it's just right on it it hits five grand quick We're running at 55 miles an hour, I mean, it drives really straight. So there you have it, a real numbers matching, strong running and driving GT350H. Now, I'm gonna reiterate this one more time. This guy owned this car for 50 years. The next guy that buy, buys it might own it for a long time too. Real numbers matching cars don't come up often. I think you're gonna love this car, the presentation it has. Lots of patina, a really neat car. Good luck with the auction.